Hello, everyone. It is another beautiful Tea Time Tuesday. So let's go ahead and jump in with some prayer, and then we will get into our top for this week. Lord God, thank you once again for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. I ask that you would just continue to speak to us, help us um, become the women of God that you've called us to be, God. I pray that you open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word on today and that you would just continue to encourage us and strengthen us in the faith, God. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. Okay, so uh, today I actually will not have a video for this. I had intended to um, jump into the, the lesson. We're still doing a Woman of God Wonderfully Made devotionals, and we're currently on week five, which I believe is the second to last um, part of the Evo, so we're almost done with that book. Um, but today I'm just being led to just have a moment of prayer um, and just a little bit of self-reflection. So, um, but just so we can have some, some scripture, um, I am going to read the scripture that we're going to be doing for uh, next week, and that is Romans chapter 1, verse 1, okay, and this is the King James Version, and it reads, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, again, that's Romans chapter 1, verse 1, <clears throat> So, um, you know, really just was previously listening to the to the last recording for the previous message and just having that reminder, um, I feel like throughout this entire year that sometimes God has you in a space where you are uncomfortable, right? Uh, when I really think about just the years of my life, you know, I'll be 35, so I I haven't been on this earth that long, right? <laughs> so a little kid, you know, 35, that's old. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's like, hey, you haven't really, I haven't really been here that long. But um, just really taking a moment to consider everything that, you know, God has brought me through in the journey thus far. Um, for a while there, I feel like I was in a comfortable space, right? There was definitely a lot of suffering, but to be honest, I feel like most of that suffering was self-inflicted suffering. Um, so, yes. Now, you know, I'm in this season where it's just like, oh, man, it was great. And I felt like right when I was getting comfortable and I was adjusting, I was like, oh, this was great. And now things are shifting again, right? And it starts with, like, the little things. And it's like, okay, my schedule keeps changing. And, I, you know, now I, I plan for this, but now i got to plan for that. And this has changed. And now this is shifting. and so. Yeah, um, you know, it's some days it, it feels like it's one thing after another. Um, but even in that, just learning like, okay, again, if you can learn to handle the little things, if you can learn to be patient through the little things, then when God positions you in a bigger space where you're going to have to deal with a whole lot more than the little the little stuff that you're dealing with right now, it's not going to, you know, not to say that it won't bother you, right? 
Um, I've kind of gotten out of the habit of saying that, like, oh, you know, it won't even bother me anymore. Yes, it will. <laughs> because we are human and we are in the flesh, and that's just, that's that's what comes with the territory. So, yeah, it's going to bother you. Um, there's going to be some things that rub you the wrong way. There's going to be some stuff that is going to tempt you to come out of character, to behave, or do things that are not of God, to behave in a way that's not of God, right? Um, that's just going to happen. But it's just when I get to that bigger space, like, oh, well, I've kind of dealt with this before, so I already know how to handle that, right? Like, God has shown me, he's prepared me for this, so now, you know, I get it, right? Um I don't know, I, I haven't really spoken it out loud as much, but I just know in my heart that God is preparing me to leave, um, to go out. How far or where exactly that's going to be, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I have a feeling, right, I think he's going to do this right, but, you know, you don't want to really go by, like, your feelings and what you think. You want to know, right? You want to know that that's, that's God telling you that and not uh, an inkling of a of a dream or a feeling that you had. Because then you're being led by your feelings or your opinions or your intuition rather than the Holy Spirit. So we don't want to do that. But I do see it happening, like, in my life the things that God is having me do and how he's doing it and the constant shifts um, around me, happening around me, happening in me. It's like, okay, you know. And, yeah, it it does not feel good, right, uh, when you just, it's like it feels like you just got adjusted and now here's another change. <laughs> Especially, you know, as women, right, we go through so many changes between our bodies, um, you know, from singlehood to being married and then you become mom and, and then there's all that and the kids grow up, then you go through that change. You know, there's like so many different shifts in there. Um, so, yeah, learning how to just, Take it one day at a time to take a breath and remember it's like God doesn't want you to be comfortable. God did not put you on this earth to live a quote-unquote comfortable life. You are a servant of the Lord. That means that your life is always going to be an adventure, right? And with that adventure, there's going to come some ups and downs. There's going to come a lot of trials and tests that are going to, you know, pop up your way. But it's never going to be boring. It's never a dull day, right? But it's like I cannot expect for God to fully use me the way, you know, I desire to be used if I'm constantly comfortable, right? Because then we have a tendency when we get in that comfort zone or we find that place or area where we're comfortable where we don't want to move. Right, you become stagnant in your growth, you become stagnant in your ministry, you become stagnant in your gifts and talents because there's nothing challenging you to grow. For what? Why why do I need to grow when I'm comfortable where I am? There's no incentive, there's nothing there to really push me to do anything. I don't see the need to do it. So yeah, I can just stay right here and that, and that's fine. <laughs> it's like mm, no I'm sorry lady but no but yeah definitely a lot of like I said a lot of shifts and a lot of changes that are happening in my life and sometimes it feels like it, it's happening in increments right I might get that one slight pause that God just allows me to like rest right um, take a nap <laughs> just be still um, but for the most part no 
it's constant, it's, yeah, like I said, it's, inc- it's incremental, it's happening little by little, those little things, and that realization is like, yep, he's, he's pushing me to not be comfortable, to not be complacent um, with where I am. And even that's been a change because there was a time in my life years ago, I'd say maybe even like four or five years ago, where I had become complacent, but I was not happy. It was more of a complacent in the sense of I feel like there's nothing I can do about my situation. So I'm not going to bother to hope or dream for something better because it's probably not going to happen anyway. And, I, you know, most likely I'm not going to be able to do it. And even if I tried, it will probably fail and yada, 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 right? Just constantly uh, was in a place where I was just speaking death um, over my own life. And now, right, it's it's a different kind of complacent, right? Because now it's like, ooh, I can stay here forever. This feels great. No, you can't stay here, though. Because you have somewhere to go after this life. (laughs) You have somewhere to go after this. There's things that, greater things, bigger things that God has for you to do. And that can't happen if you're staying in this small area. Right? So looking back at this verse, which, by the way, I still have to finish this verse because. Y'all, I I started off looking up the one word, and then the next thing I know, I started looking up all the words in the verse. (laughs) Started doing a word study on almost all of them. Um, So it's definitely going to take us a a while to get through the lesson when we we start it next week, okay? Just giving you a heads up. But looking at it, right, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Romans 1 and 1, King James Version, right? Separated. Separated. That doesn't sound like somebody who was in their comfort zone. And in case you forgot Paul's story, he was not. Because he had to remind a few of the the saints himself in, in one of his letters, right? If you think that you're bad, right, because, you know, oh, I'm, I'm so holy and this and the other. Okay, well, I've been in three shipwrecks. I've been incarcerated. I've been stoned to death and brought back from death, you know. He's bitten by a serpent. I mean, the dude, he went through a lot. He started naming all the things, the trials and all the, the persecution that he faced. He's like, oh, you know your theology? Well, I, I know, I definitely know my theology. My daddy was a Pharisee, you know, Pharisee, and I was a, a brilliant scholar. I'm well educated, you know, like, <laughs> and I've been through it all. And guess what? All of it means nothing, because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is Christ. Right? So he was never comfortable. He was never comfortable, right? For general Bible study, the the book that we're looking at right now, Philippians, he was in jail when he wrote Philippians. For those ladies who may have missed the general Bible study, right, we talked about how Paul was chained to a guard as part of his um, his time, his, his incarceration, right? It was part of his house arrest. And the way they did it back then was you were chained to a Roman soldier. So everywhere you went, the soldier was with you. Even the bathroom, the soldier's with you. You going to bathe? Oh, he's with you. No privacy. Oh, you going to sleep? Soldier's with you. Okay. Imagine how uncomfortable that was. And yet, he never wavered. He did not waver in his faith didn't mean that he didn't have some bad days because he definitely does it in this book, right, in Romans. I go to do uh, what's right and evil is present. Paraphrasing. 
So, you know, it, it's it's a constant, right? When we are separated, right, to be called to be that messenger. Not an apostle, but we'll we'll get into that next week. I'm called to be a servant. We all have that have that responsibility to be a servant. We've talked about that too, right? It's not something that is just left to the pastor or the first lady or even the pastor's kids because, uh, you know, I didn't realize how bad that was. But you do see it where people will put so much pressure and responsibility on the pastor's children. That's like, well, it's no wonder that they left the church because look at the way that, you know, so even in that, right, we're all, we all share that responsibility. But again, that also means that, yeah, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to be pushed. I'm going to be challenged. I'm going to be tested. Right? It's going to happen. Okay? And you can, you can expect that change to come. I can't sit there and expect every season to be full of sunshine and rainbows. I, I can't. It's not realistic. But I can trust that God is with me even when it feels like I'm going through the worst storm of my life when it is so dark that I can't see ahead of me, but I know that he's there. Okay. Um, Something interesting that I remember listening to was a podcast uh, recently that I found on, like, YouTube. And I cannot remember the man's name. (laughs) I think his name is, like, Tim Ross. And it's called The Basement, right? And so his thing is that he talks to people from all walks of life, uh, believers, non-believers, everybody in between, right? Um, But his goal is to have those honest conversations with people regarding faith and other topics, right? But one of the things that he's talking about, one of his episodes I was listening to where he's talking with Lecrae was about how He's like, you know, change is a part of the framework, right? Um, God put created change in the seasons, right? If the earth itself and nature has changed, right? We go through the different seasons. We have winter and spring and fall and summer. Right? Nothing stays the same. It doesn't stay in a, in a constant state, right? So it's like by you deciding, well, I don't like change and I hate this. It's like you're really speaking out against God. <laughs> and I don't know. For me, it just gave me some perspective. Like, you know, that's true. I cannot stay the same in my faith walk. I have to grow. I have to be different. Even, you know, toward the beginning of this of this year, right, we have barely... I always laugh at myself when I'm like, toward the beginning of this year, and it's like, it's February. <laughs> it's February, but I, I'm dead serious when I say I feel like that first month felt like six months. Mentally, spiritually, for me, it felt like six months because of just everything. The spiritual attacks, the mental attacks on my mental health. Like, so many things that just happened in January that it was like, what is going on? That just felt like I went through six months. And I'm like, ooh, it's only January. Now I'm toward, you know, we're near the end of February. I'm like, wow, it's it's not even March yet, but all right. <laughs> we're getting there. We are getting there. Um, but yeah, even even in January already, you know, it's it's recognizing like okay, I have I have to change, and this is going to be a constant in my life. Like that's what I'm seeing now, toward the end of February. You know, like I've gone through another three months, but 
realizing like, yeah, you're always going to be in a place where you're going to have to grow and you're going to have to be different because if you're the same person, if I was the same person I was in high school, you know, at the age of 34, going on 35, that's a problem, right? Like, where's your maturity? What is going on that you're still acting like a child? And you still have childish ways and behavior like this. That's not good, right? Um, so yeah, definitely at thirty four going on thirty five, I can't be who I am now. You know, Lord willing, thirty years from now, I want to be somebody different. I want to have some some for real growth, right? We talked about that full bloom. On that day, when the Lord called me home, I want to be a full bloom. I don't, I don't want to have missed out on all the potential, right? Leave here and you know pass away, and I left behind all this potential that because I didn't really tap into God the way I should have. I didn't really go full out for Him like I should have. I did not allow Him to grow me and mature me the way He desired to because I was set in my ways, and this is just the way that I am, and this is the way I've always been, and yada, yada, yada. You know, even this morning, it was something I was thinking about where it's like, you know, even if I get to 70, I don't want to be that 70-year-old who's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm sitting, this is who I am. No, I want to be that 70-year-old who's full of wisdom, or at least have a, has enough wisdom to know that it's never too late to change. And if you see that something needs to change in you, you can do it. You don't have to continue to be a certain way or to keep reacting the same way to certain things. You can be different. So that's what I guess I'm I'm stressing today is I want to challenge us as women of God to be different, right? If you know that you complain too much, stop complaining. And to be honest, that's something I struggle with too, right? I'm quick to see things that are done in a way I don't like, whether, you know, it's my brother or my mom or, you know, I don't know, somebody, you know, or just random people on the street. And I'm like, well, why would they do it? Why are you <laughs> in the person's business? Like, focus on what you need to do, right? And so it's like, rather than complaining, I'm going to just start giving God thanks. Right? Every time I go to complain, oh, but you know what, Lord? I'm going to thank you anyhow because without you, I wouldn't even have nothing to eat. Right? If I'm complaining about what I'm eating. Or, you know, if I go to do something, I'm like, man, you know, I can't believe I don't have enough stuff. But I do have hot water. And some people don't have any water in their house right now, Lord, so I'm going to thank you for that. Like, man, I wish I had nicer clothes. But you know what? I do have clothes, Lord, and I'm going to thank you that I have clothes on my back. Man, I wish I had my own place. But you know what, God? I'm going to thank you anyhow because at least I have a place to sleep. Because there are women my age on the street with nowhere to go having to do some things, unspeakable things, just to survive. You have kept me, so I'm just going to give you praises for that. And the more you start giving God praise, the less you realize, you know, I really don't have anything to complain about. Because all you do when you nag or complain is you're uprooting your harvest. Do you even realize that? When you start complaining about people, it's like, why don't you try praying for that person? I hate when they do this, and I can't stand when they... Maybe you need to ask God for patience. Like, Lord, you know what? Give me the patience to know how to love this person, even when they do things that get on my my last nerve. Give me the the patience to, you know, be able to love this person through their faults because that is what I would want for me. That is what you give to me every day. 
right? Get to that to that place. If you know that you gossip too much, first of all, you gossip at all, right? We're not supposed to be doing that at all. So it's like if you know that you gossip, it's like, you know what, I don't want to do that, blah, 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 right? And it's like, okay, then you need to start cutting people off, right? And it's kind of funny. If you are the one that spreads gossip, but then you wonder why no one comes to you, why does no one ever ask me for advice or why does no one ever come to me? Because they can't trust you to be a confidant. They know that you're going to run your mouth and tell everybody everything they told you. That's not a good confidant. It's not. If I can't trust you to be that person that I come to in confidence, why would I? I ain't telling you nothing. I'm leaving it high and by. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, we, we have to start doing better. It's like if it's that, oh, my goodness, this is so big, I just got to tell somebody. Why didn't you tell the Lord? I mean, that's why they, they shared it with you, right? Most likely they thought there was something about your walk well, you know, they're a believer. And, you know, they, they seem like they know who God is, so let me come to them and let me talk to them. And then you go and share all their business? How do you think that makes me, Like, do you even know the setback that you cause in that person? Like, you know what? I thought that you were different. But you know, you're a hypocrite like all the other Christians that I've ever met. So you know what? Never mind. I'm good. You reactivate a wound when you do stuff like that. So again, it's like if you know that you're in a place in your life, a season in your life where God is challenging you to be different, to grow, then now's the time to do that. Now is the time to be separated from all the things that you thought you needed from your idols in your life, and it is so funny how we think, like, we don't think we would actively seek things, right, Um, false gods or things of that nature, but it's funny when God starts calling out those idols in your life, whether it is family or a family member or a friend, your job, the music you listen to, artists that you follow. Or, you know, if they're an influencer, right, a a content creator, certain food that you eat, shows you watch, books that you're reading, or the type of things that you read, the list goes on and on and on and on, right? Once he starts calling those things out, if it becomes an issue for you or you become offended, Right? Like you become indignant. Well, why I got to stop doing that? Right? And it's funny how that works. I just, I just have to say this, right? It's funny how that works because it could be something as simple as, I don't know, we'll say like football. Right? There are some people who, yeah, football is an idol for them. For them. And so the Lord's like, you know what, I need you to let this go because you spend more time doing that. You will set your entire schedule for these games, but you don't set any time for me. As a matter of fact, you push me to the side. Right? You push me to the side and be like, well, God can wait. He understands. He knows my heart. Yeah, he knows it was in your heart to go watch that game than to go spend time with him because you didn't think it was important. But it was more important for you to do this other thing. That's an idol, right? And so it's like God will call them out on that. But then the next thing you know, when they finally respond, right, to that conviction, then it's like, purple is a sin. No, 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 no. It's like those two extremes. Right? Either it's like, oh, it's not that big a deal or it's a huge deal and everybody needs to stop doing it. No, he called you out on that. He told you to let that go. 
Right. He told you to stop talking to that person. He told you to stop listening to, you know, that that artist or whoever. He told you to stop. Now, some people, you know, if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit like that and you are not spending that time with God so you're not spiritually in tune, so you cannot, you're not aware of blatant things that, yeah, it's like, yeah, you probably should stop listening to that artist low-key, right? Especially if they're talking about things in their music that is not of God. I'm <laughs> just putting it out there, right? This is a, this is a little thing. It might even be your dress, the clothes you wear, and God might call you out on that and be like, hey, you need to give that up. Like I said, if it becomes a struggle for you, if it's not, if it's not something that you could just readily let go or you find yourself making excuses for why you can't let go or you keep trying to justify why you should have it, it's an idol. <laughs> it's an idol. That is something that you love more than God. It can even be your identity. Your sexuality. Yeah, this stuff, we don't really like to talk about that, but it's true. Anything and anybody that I just can't readily submit and lay down, that's an idol. <laughs> so, yeah, going back to the thing earlier, like, if you know that God is calling you out on some things and he is telling you, like, you know what, this needs to change, you need to do that. Right? Like, I already know, right? Even as, even as I say that, there's always going to be that one person that even as they're listening, like, uh, maybe tomorrow. And that goes, to, you know, I was in that place too because I kept saying I wanted to change and I wanted something different and God, I don't want to be in this place anymore, but I wasn't changing. I was not actively making an effort to change. I wasn't even trying. It was just like, oh, well, I, I wish I could. I really want to. Do you? Do you want to? Because you're not moving like it. You don't live like you, you're somebody that's tired of being tired. You move like somebody who is complacent, like I said later, earlier, right? You move like somebody who's become complacent being in this kind of state of either sinfulness or just kind of existing because you know what you should be doing, but you're still not doing it. But, yeah, that's that's our challenge, my challenge for all of you, that's for myself. Be different. To be different, we got to do things differently. I can't expect a new harvest. I can't expect increase. I can't expect those new blessings and new things to come into my life if I'm still living like I did in the past. I want to be a new me. I can't do that being past me. I can't do that doing the things that the old me did and thinking the way that the old me used to think. Right? So, again, that's that's my challenge for all of us. Right? Do something different. Be somebody different today. Make the effort. You're not going to get it right on the first try. And even if you do, you might not get it right on the second try. You might mess up. Keep doing it anyway. Keep trying. Keep making that effort. Because as long as I keep moving forward and I continue to trust God in spite of my failures, in spite of those days when I mess up, then you can't even imagine the growth that's going to come into your life, that joy unspeakable that fills you up, that peace that surround you, right? So, 
that being said, <laughs> I'm serious. That was that was it for today. But I am gonna I'm gonna pray us out. And again, I just really want you to take time to sit down and really ask God. Okay, what has to give? What has to move or be removed from my life in order for me to be the woman that you have called me to be? In order for me to go on to do the things that you're calling me to do now in this season of my life? When I first started this walk, I only probably did maybe, you know, poetry and that was it. Now I look around and there are so many, there's so much more that God has equipped and added to my ministry. And there's many more things that he's bringing my way. That I, like I said, I see him preparing me for that, to go out. But if, I'm, if I can't prove to be faithful right where I am, it's going to be kind of hard for me to go out, right? <laughs> oh. Really, you know, seek God and pray that he will reveal to you those things that that need to go. Whether it's some bad habits, a mindset, or some idols, or all of the above that have to go. So that you can allow him to come in and equip you with the tools and the things that you need to move forward. Right? that you can move on to the next thing, or if you haven't even started your assignment yet, so you can get to that first assignment. (laughs) Okay. All you have to do is say yes. It is a beautiful thing when we say yes to the Lord. And don't look back. Might be tempted to. But even in that, remember where he brought you from. Like, no, I don't, no, 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 I ain't going back to that. Nah. I'm going to stay right where I'm at. Because I don't miss that at all. Whether that was that dead-end relationship that wasn't going nowhere, that friendship that you needed to let go of, whatever it is, like, nah, we ain't, mm-mm. unhealthy eating habits, whatever it might be. And now we ain't going back to that. We're moving forward. Okay. So let us go ahead and pray. Lord God, I just thank you once again all today. Um, I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, God. I thank you for being the great I am. I thank you for being a comforter. I thank you for being a way maker, God. I thank you for your peace, which goes beyond all understanding. And, Lord, I just thank you for all the wonderful and amazing things that you have done in our lives. I thank you for the things that you're doing now and for the things that you will do. And, God, I just ask that you continue to just mold us and shape us into the women you've called us to be. Lord, for that woman who maybe is new in the faith or Maybe she's been walking with you for a while but is still unsure of what that assignment is or what exactly it is that you would have her do. But I pray that you will reveal that to her in your own time. I pray that you continue to prepare us all for that first assignment or that next assignment, whichever it should be. I pray, God, that you continue to mold our minds and our hearts, that our thoughts and our desires will be of you that we will only want and thirst after the things that you desire for us, God. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to challenge us to grow, um, to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, Lord, I pray for myself that you would just continue to see me through this season of humility. Um, Remind me of why I'm in this season, God, and why you allow certain things in our lives to come. God, I pray that you just continue to keep each and every single one of these women, each and every single person um, listening to my voice on today. I pray that you continue to just grow that fire and zeal in our hearts for you and your word, God, and that you will equip us to 
be that servant who is well studied in your word, God, to be a good soldier who endures to the end. In Jesus' name I pray, thank God, and amen. So, again, do something different. Stop waiting on God to wave a magic wand and make all your problems go away or, you know, magically transform you into the person that you think you ought to be. Note that I said the person I said, the person you think you ought to be. Ask God to mold your heart, to refocus your mind and your purpose on his will. Right? What does that godly woman look like to you? And who does God say she is? Then do a comparison, right? And be like, okay, God, who did you create me to be? Help me to become that person. And I just I have to say it again. Do something different. There's complaining and nagging and, you know, all those things. That it doesn't change anything. But fighting God every step of the way really doesn't change anything either. Right? Learn to be grateful. Learn to give God thanks. Do not become complacent, but learn to be content with whatever he's given you, wherever he has placed you, with whatever he has you doing. And look forward with joy to the next thing that he has for you to do, because he is going to move you on to something else. Change is inevitable. It's just going to happen. Okay? So just be thankful for that. Rejoice in that. Right? So before I get started again, (laughs) y'all ladies, take care. God bless. And bye.